Welcome friends my name is Avinash Gorakshekar and I welcome all of you to another uh, interesting episode of Konaksya High Flyers in this uh, kind of episodes we introduce to you emerging corporates and talk to them about their business models their growth journey and obviously their prospects going forward and uh, friends we have uh, you know always uh, you know try to introduce to you top management teams of these companies which can make you understand these companies better and today uh, we have got a very interesting company by the name of basilic uh, supply studio limited and we have the top management team with us we have uh, mr balakrishnan managing director and the ceo of the company we have mrs uh, yogalakshmi chief operating officer of the company and we have jennifer hargreaves who is gm business development from north america uh, gentlemen thank you very much for sparing your valuable time today for this show we are quite sure that you know it will be a good productive session for us which will make our viewers understand your company uh, much better sure yeah thank you so uh, bala i think the first question uh, to you would be that uh, if you could tell us something about your you know business journey and the kind of broad business model the company does uh, in short what is the positioning of the company as of now if you could add some color on this sure ravi thank you so much for uh, setting up this platform for us and it really is a pleasure for us to come on board on this meeting and uh, yeah to talk about business model uh, building a company from scratch uh, to take it to global level uh, uh, to cater to the needs of global visual effects industry uh, we need to understand to uh, match the quality requirements of uh, hollywood mainstream hollywood or else um, a television network would need so that uh, we'll have to build a team to match to that level uh, first thing is to find out a good team and uh, to establish a good platform for that we started with five artists initially and uh, uh, mainly it is uh, the initial uh, stages where uh, we'll have to really look in for opportunities mainly towards uh, roto prep and match with those or traditional outsourcing services but uh, we will have to really set up a platform for the artists where they will have to really get into uh, area where uh, uh, they understand the quality requirements and uh, we train them we find raw talents and train them into uh, become a industry ready industry ready artists and likewise find uh, experienced artists who are industry ready and also understand the uh, requirement uh, that is required for the hollywood movies so that's where uh, we try to align and uh, try to align those artists together and uh, find a process where uh, they can really deliver uh, high level quality work that is needed for uh, mainstream hollywood uh, films or television network that's where uh, how we as a business model uh, how we started initially and uh, then down the line for 5 years and uh, Uh, we found out it's not how we going to move forward only with outsourcing work but as a company we need to really evolve and transform that's where we extend our range of services as well uh, into other areas uh, like compositing and uh, we also brought in our cg team i built our cg team as well uh, so that really helped us to extend our range of services and uh, to work closely with clients uh, not only with major vfx studios but also directly with the uh, production houses as well uh in the uh, during these timelines and uh, as a company uh, if you look into uh, in the last 10 years from bring a, building a company from five member team to 500 what we are now and uh, it not only shows the numbers that we how we have grown but uh, the way we transformed as a company uh, to deliver uh, real quality work and also the pipeline that we had and uh, the determination to uh, work and aspire uh, to become a global vfx company Uh, that's where we are at the moment uh, we have teams small teams in uh, uk and also in north america uh, where we try to get the clients confidence and uh, build teams globally and uh, we started as an outsourcing company initially 10 years back but now we have positioned ourselves to get ourselves involved in right from uh, our concept to uh, final deliveries so that's how we uh, aspire for and uh, and we have more aspirations and determinations across uh, next Two years down the line, and uh, uh, we are we are very much geared up for it, and uh, looking forward to it. So I think uh, very nicely articulated, uh, Bala. Now tell me one thing. Coming to your product range, you know, if you could tell us what are the key products, you know, within your current revenue pie, uh, what uh, you know kind of product and services accounts for a lion share of the uh, you know of the revenue mix, and which are the categories where you know you all have developed a very strong competitive edge, where you know you all have a very strong bargaining power with the customers. something that you could add some color wala uh, the product mainly uh, mainly solve visual effects when uh, we work on movies not about one sector one section of work that we look into uh, when we bid work uh, it's all about uh, multiple tasks that we always look into we do a well round games for uh, 
PG and VFX at the moment. And uh, uh, when we look into a script, uh, this is all something that we can uh, cover uh, based on the teams that we have uh, built over the last 10 years. And uh, and likewise, as uh, likewise as in a competitive edge, uh, we do have global teams uh, right from uh, build, starting from. We have usually seen uh, studios generally coming from North America or else Europe uh, coming and uh, working out with talents here collaboratively. Likewise, as a team, uh, maybe as a differently, what we have done is uh, growing out of India from scratch and uh, moving towards West and in Europe as well as in North America. We have very uh, good teams out there as well and also a very solid, uh, such humongous team here in India through which uh, we would able to, we are able to uh, work collaboratively and uh, and that's a model that clients also like and really uh, because uh, uh, we collaboratively work and also make use, use of uh, the global opportunities uh, available locally in North America as well as EPO and also use the talent here in India to a level where uh, we can deliver good high level products. Yeah, I think uh, Bala, now the next question would have, which I would like to ask you is that if you could tell us, you know, what are the kind of uh, customers you work with? If you could share some names and typically what's the kind of active customer base currently the company enjoys? The active customer, uh, anytime would be, uh, we would have at least 30 to 35 clients. We would be working on floor. Uh, sometimes during uh, peak times, it can go up to 40, 45, uh, but it doesn't get lesser than 30, 35. Uh, usually that's how uh, and likewise, uh, we don't uh, restrict ourselves to work with one particular client. We always make sure that uh, we diversify our team to different clients because the relationship is a key in this business. And uh, so that's where our uh, focus is. And uh, and as you ask for customers, uh, uh, we work with mainly major VFX studios. If you take any major VFX studios across the globe, it would be either from North America, Europe, or else in Australia, New Zealand. Uh, we work with all the major VFX studios and uh, work on prestigious projects uh, either be uh, films or television or else short form commercials uh, we get uh, work on uh, and participate and collaborate with these major studios on their complex and challenging projects okay my next question is to jennifer ma'am mm -hmm. uh, jennifer ma'am what is the normal time duration the company takes to execute the orders once uh, you know it gets the order from the customer typically what's the kind of time duration one can expect for final delivery of the services rendered by the company well, in visual effects, every single project is different, right? You could get, uh, you can get a project that's three shots. You can get a project that's 300 shots. And within those shots, there are different disciplines. We handle roto, paint, comp, tracking, 3D, all of these services. And we may be asked to do one service on one shot or five services on 300 shots. So as you can imagine, the timeline uh, for those two scenarios is very different. Um, we, the way that we do our bidding is we get links from the client, they send us the brief, we go through it, we bid it, and then we plan a timeline um, that builds in time for the initial work plus a round or two of revisions. So um, we've had projects that we can deliver on an overnight if it's just uh, a couple of scenes for Roto and we put a couple of artists on it and boom, boom, it's done. Or we do projects that are months long because um, there's rolling delivery from our client of the files and then we return a rolling delivery of the completed work. Okay, bye. Okay, now the next question to you is that, you know, in North America, what is the kind of opportunity you see for, you know, VFX services, especially for a company like ours? Uh, do you expect this market to grow exponentially for players from India? Uh, I think, I think yes. Um, not just in North America, but in South America as well. There's a lot of work emerging um, in the Latin American market that we are currently talking to some people about. Um, so my, my range is really going to be America's, right? So after COVID, there was a big boom. We're seeing a little bit of a slowdown right now, but after this slowdown, it's going to ramp right back up. And, um, you know, there's, there's just a consumers these days really look for these high end visual effects movies and they're really, really into them. But what people don't realize is that your average everyday non-visual effects movie also has visual effects. So okay. there's always going to be a need, whether it's something that the consumer is aware of or 
they're not aware of because you know on day one they shot and it was sunny and on day two in the same location they shot and it was cloudy we got to change the sky you know so it's it's stuff that customers never never see and they never really know about um so there's always 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 going to be a need okay so basically what i understand from what you said jennifer ma'am is that the opportunity is huge and the runway for growth is definitely going to be very solid uh, going forward is it correct fine now uh, the next question is to yoga lakshmi uh, you know if you could tell us you know how do you plan your manpower kind of requirement for new projects typically when you get a new uh, kind of business uh, kind of uh, you know uh, interest and then it culminates into a confirmed order how is the manpower you know planned at your end so that you know the client also gets the best possible service and obviously within a proper time delivery you know the service is delivered to the client so anything on this if you could please comment yeah usually what we do is we have a very good uh, relationship with the clients so they come up with heads up uh, certain clients come up with heads up one week before certain clients they give us a three to four months uh, uh, information of what resources are required for what which week uh, so uh, with which we would be able to plan for uh, resources we make them available uh, if in case if we need more resources we make sure that we have a uh, good number of uh, up resources are getting available uh, week on week and slowly we ramp up the resources as the project gets bigger uh, the size gets bigger based on the turnover we kind of uh, make sure that the resources are available to ensure that the quality is also maintained as per the client requirement so this is how it's like we start with a slow uh, maybe if in case the, if the requirement is for 50 initially we start with for a week or for a, for a day if it is 50 uh, initially we will not give we will not be able to accommodate 50 resources as most of them would be engaged in other projects as well so uh, we initially start with 10 15 resources and then slowly ramp up the number of resources as the project gets built on so that is how we keep our resources available and uh, as far as the payments are concerned uh, ma'am you know how is the payment cycle as soon as you complete one part of the project or is it like once the project is complete entirely at that point of time you know the payments are disbursed to you or is it in a kind of a, as per the work projects uh, you know continue then you get the you know payments for the services rendered so how is the cycle you know the payment yeah. cycle yeah as uh, jennifer previously uh, told you that uh, uh they can work on projects we can just work on 3 to 4 shots we can work for 300 shots so there are different types of projects that we work on so for instance we work on some commercial projects what we do is like those they, those are just one week turn arounds or two three days turn arounds so uh in that case what we do is like we finish the project quickly and then we invoice them quickly and get it billed so it will be uh, approximately net 15 to 30 days of payments for those projects if in case if you are working on major uh, projects for instance a movie project which runs around for 9 to 10 months then what we do is like we uh, we build on mil milestones uh, for instance uh, we, we get a pro in case of a major production house they pay in advance for us to start the work uh, maybe 30% of advance would be paid and then after finishing a particular amount of uh, shots then they will be paying us another 40% and then final upon final delivery will be paid another 30 40% so that is how uh, for major okay. studios it will work in case if, if you were be working for some other uh, clients it will be like uh, turnover base once we complete two three turnovers we build them and then the turnover may get extended up to 50, 50 or 100 turnovers okay. so that is how the payment cycle works for us okay uh bala now the next question to you is that you know what is your sense on the assessment of the overall opportunity for you you know from global markets like us europe you know typically because wfx has become a kind of a very well let down kind of uh, technology feature Uh, you know in almost uh, most of the you know famous or maybe the blockbuster movies and that is a big opportunity and that is something which is uh, impressed the audience quite significantly so in terms of the market opportunity can we assume that the next say 2 3 years uh, we could see a strong runway for growth for our company especially looking at the kind of clients you have the kind of studios you cater so anything on this if you could comment yeah absolutely and uh, we have positioned ourselves greatly to you know uh, take it up for the next 5 to 10 years uh, down the line and uh, i say this because uh, uh, the demand from ott platforms is quite high and uh, we could see uh, recently uh, uh, the recent release of uh, barbi and other movies uh, that have come in uh, great hits and uh, they have made blockbuster so we can see more of those movies coming in and uh, maybe as in we see audience also looking for that kind of visual experience as they come on screen or else if they, if they have to watch it on streaming platforms whatever it is the visual needs to be really enhanced and beautified so for that visual effects is something that is a key 
and uh, we really feel as in uh, as for uh, for us as in uh, we have teams globally here in, in not only in india but also uh, in europe and north america we are we are positioned ourselves greatly and also uh, we see future potential as well as in uh, we are trying to build uh, teams uh, not, not only uh, in chennai uh, we are based out of chennai but uh, we also have a location in pune we have teams in pune uh, they have come really well and likewise uh, we also plans in hyderabad as well as in salem down the line uh, these are the two other locations that we have planned and likewise in london as well as in uh, north america we have plans so uh, these plans are based upon the projects that are lined up in the industry like wow marvel netflix and other major production houses have planned up their productions and uh, there are a lot of other avenues as well apart from uh, mainstream films and televisions there are uh, commercials coming in there are interactive experiences we can all get into those areas and uh, we see a lot of potential for us as a company and uh, uh, is something that we will we'll have to exciting times ahead for us as uh, we'll have to plan a lot of things uh, in the next 2 3 5 years right so fine i think uh, bala again well articulated uh, yoga lakshmi now tell me one thing that is this industry driven by order book like you know when we look at it companies specifically just as an example we look at the total commercial value the tcv you know which is obviously disclosed by the company management in our case do we have some sort of order book and based on that put people and obviously execute the job so typically you know you know on a very broad basis uh, you know could you share us some idea about what kind of order book you all normally work with and what's the kind of uh, you know timeline you all take for these orders to get completed for example you have 100 order then after that do you stop or you keep on accepting orders and increase your you know the talent base so uh as you as we already mentioned uh, we do not uh, restrict ourselves working with one particular client we do have working relationship with uh, 30 to 45 40 clients uh, at a time so order book means the number of available uh, available resources uh, uh, for us to take up the work and deliver so that is how we can say the order book is so most of the time we get into a, a complete booking or we would not be in a position to take up more work and deliver them so that will be the position uh, which we have built uh, for the past 10 years uh, we are in a position that we we uh, get a lot of work and we say that we wouldn't be able to accommodate because we do not have uh, available resources to pick up the job and deliver as per the required standard and quality so that is how it has been till now so uh, we would we wouldn't be in a position to say that uh, we have a order book of this amount for this particular timeline like that but then it is uh, actually it might be around 6 to 8 months of vision we have with each client uh, it varies with clients so that is how it is generally if, if in case if bala or jennifer wanted to add more on it it will be much better for me i think in terms of the order book when we're talking to clients and especially when client when the when the projects are really large ones they do have a little bit of play in terms of their schedule so as as yoga was mentioning you know at one point we might be like completely full for a, a week and we we would say oh well we couldn't take it on that week but we have such good relationships with our clients that we could say hey you know our resources are a little tied up this week but we really can we can double up the following week and then triple up the week after that to make up for that time are you okay with that so it really is about um you know just the open communication with our clients and and being able to you know they trust the work that we do so if we say we can't do it in week 1 but we can do it in week 2 um most of the time they're very very um happy to move that move forward that way okay so far i understood uh tell me one thing uh, yogalakshmi that you know in terms of pricing you know for your contracts whether it's a short end customer or a long end kind of customer you know obviously pricing is something which is uh, static or which is dynamic like for example uh, is there uh, you know a possibility that some overheads get little costly across the timeline of the contract so do you do you have these kind of variables put in in your contracts or is it a fixed price contract uh, typically how is pricing decided on a customer to customer basis depending on the work depending on the timeline if you could you know add some color here so uh, the pricing differs uh, from client to client we do have some standard rates but then if uh, the a uh, project has a lot of a uh, lot of work to do and if there is any budget uh, a budget with the client we kindly we kind of tend to work around the budget and make sure that uh, we deliver them uh, as per the need because in this industry relationship is what is more important than anything mm-hmm. else but at the same time we kind of maintain 
a safe budget and if in case if there are any additional work that is to be delivered then we kind of quote to the client that this is additional which is not expected so that will be approved by the client so that is how we take it uh, forward in terms of budgets and in terms of uh, bidding and all okay right and and, and, uh, and we also um you know for most of the clients not most of the clients but for a good deal of the clients especially the ones that i work with um you know we bid in us dollars but regardless of, of that we can bid in any currency needed so for australia and new zealand most of the time um we're doing you know new zealand dollars canadian dollars for canada obviously um and in in terms of you know there is a set budget at the beginning but on on these bigger projects 99.9 .9 of the time additional work comes up along the way and i would say on any given really large project there's anywhere between a 10 to 20 percent you know bump on what the original budget was by the time we're done because of a, a, you know additional work that's found along the way whether you know somebody missed a boom mic or or additional cleanup you know cables uh stuff like that so it all adds up in the end and, and it um you know if it's a hundred thousand dollar job all of a sudden it's a hundred and twenty thousand dollar job so it's uh it's it's we make sure that a the bids are padded but then we also know that there's usually some additional work that's going to come along the way yeah i think i think very well articulated uh you know by jennifer member so tell me one thing like uh bala now uh, in, as far as the repeat business is concerned like in our business what is the importance of repeat business and how much repeat business uh do we normally get from your you know marquee customers who have been with you for a long time like something on this, if you could, you know, share. Yeah, as you spoke about repeat business size, uh, relationship is the key here in uh, our business. And uh, as in we started uh, with five members, we grew to 500 members. Uh, the reason behind that is uh, how we, uh, how, the cust how the clients trusted us really. Uh, so that's the reason now we could able to build a team to a level from five to 500. Uh, so it really depends upon the relationship, the trust that we uh, develop over the years with the client and uh, and helping them do during the challenging times. And uh, that's where uh, they also have that loyalty with us in the sense that make, they make sure that uh, they work with us consistently and also the word of mouth, through word of mouth, uh, they also spread it across to their networks. And that's how uh, we build a good cluster of clients around us. Yeah. Yeah, right. and as, as as artists and supervisors and executives move from one company to another, if they've had a good experience with us yeah. uh, at one company, then all of a sudden we're working with the company yeah. that they're now working with. So, you know, the relationships don't stop with just the yeah. client company. The relationships really are um, individual as well. Yeah, yeah the key uh, is... Uh building trust with the clients as well as building trust with the team so that's what is a key to our business uh, uh, not only about doing good work alongside that uh, building the trust uh, is something that's really a key to our business no understood i think bala very well uh, uh, you know mentioned by you now yoga lakshmi i want to understand one question which is uh, you know a logical question to what bala answered now like uh, what is the key differentiation which our company provides to customers like you know there are many companies which are in the market like one is of course the relationships which you mentioned with your customers but apart from them anything else which is qualitative you know which is not quantitative uh, what are the other things which come on the table when you sit with the client when you deliver the you know the, the final service to them so if you could put two three qualitative points for us which could make us understand you know your operations a little better yeah sure uh, as far as what I've seen uh, for the past 10 years is that we always tend to deliver the quality required by the clients. There is always uh, the talk that uh, there are few shops, shorts kept, uh, there are few complex shots kept for Basilic. So that is when that is what when we go and talk to clients, they say these are Basilic shots. They would be the best person to deliver this without any hesitation or any delays or any uh, questions that the relationship that we have built with the client is so comfortable that they know that we can deliver this on timeline on the expected quality so that is one thing which i would say that uh, is very important for any relationship to trust and uh, to, to ensure that the trust is well maintained and if the, if in case if the client is in any kind of uh, tight delivery situation what we tend to do is we kind of make sure that the artists are available to 
uh, cater to the needs of the cl uh, client and uh, make sure that they are comfortable delivering the complex uh, shots uh, as per their timelines and delivery dates. So that is what is one key thing which I would say. And the other one is like the communication part. Uh, if we are not even like if there is some delays in our deliveries, we tend to go and tell the clients that this is uh, the delivery date is today or tomorrow or in one week. But then uh, I we think there there could be some delay in the delivery because uh, there is a lot more work to be addressed in that particular shot. So in that way, the client becomes more comfortable. And in case if the client needs some work in progress, we kind of go and tell the client that we'd be happy to share them a WIP so that they can make use in their work and get it all prepared for the final delivery. So uh, by making this, the client becomes more comfortable that the work is going to come as per the standards. So this is the or this is one more point which we do to make sure the client is happy with this. Uh, other than that, uh, we kind of keep a constant uh, client communication. The artists, the supervisors out of Chennai and Pune, they talk to the clients on weekly calls. Uh, if they have any questions or if there are any uh, kickbacks, uh, we kind of make sure that the client side supervisor and our side supervisor are in sync and there is no uh, uh, any difference of uh, op a difference of understanding and also all those things are very well uh, made sure and those are fulfilled by the uh, teams here so the producers uh, take very good care of the client and make sure that the etas are managed they're delivered on time so all those things are also managed so that is how we kind of maintain the relationship and build the relationship with the client okay fine uh, Bala, now uh, if you could, uh, you know, share the broad uh, FY23 financials and, uh, you know, if you could tell us also something about your forthcoming IPO, you know, how big is the IPO, what is the objective of the IPO, if you could share some data points for our viewers. Uh, we had a very good last year and uh, we uh, made around 78.95 uh, crore, uh, the top line and uh, bottom line is uh, 27 uh, crores, 27.7 crores and uh, likewise uh, we see a uh, Profit after tax of around 30 to 35 percentage uh, last as in last year and likewise uh, we hope to that would continue the way we performed this year as well and uh, and uh, we do have uh, great plans for the next upcoming years as in uh, we have great we have plans to expand ourselves not only uh, uh, within Chennai as well as in Pune which uh, we are already doing in right now and uh, also we are planning to have another look another office in Hyderabad as well as in uh, Salem uh, likewise. Uh, we also have plans to uh, invest in uh, Europe as well as in North America uh, to expand our teams out there and uh, to work closely with clients on ma with major networks particularly. So these are the areas that we've been planning and uh, we see great potentials coming up for us as, in a, as a company that for the platform that we have set up for so far in the last 10 years. And uh, we also see some very good well wishes around us as in the form of clients and they also want us to grow and develop. And uh, we could see that uh, things coming uh, in, in place for us and uh, it's quite exciting times and uh, uh, this is something that uh, whatever the hard work that we have delivered in the last 10 years uh, what we have done one one thing in common is uh, we just made sure that uh, we groomed our team to deliver international quality work uh, for mainstream Hollywood movies even though if it is for uh, uh, even though if we have started with the uh, roto prep and match move but that has grown from uh, that has moved from to CG and VFX as well. So we have teams who can deliver uh, high quality work, and uh, it's quite exciting times for us. And uh, really looking forward to. Well, I think uh, one question which I wanted you to answer also was, uh, you know, any uh, you know kind of update on the IPO plans, like what kind of money are you raising? What is the kind of uh, you know objective for the fundraising? If you could give us these details a little briefly to all of you. We are planning to raise over 65 to 70 crores uh, through IPO and uh, likewise uh, we have plans to expand uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, uh, we have plans to invest into our infrastructure as well and also apart from that uh, uh, we are looking to expand in Hyderabad and Salem uh, other offices uh, maybe 200 to 250 members in Hyderabad and likewise 100 and 150 plus team members in Salem uh, adding on to uh, maybe uh, like uh, 700 we would be in Chennai and Pune together uh, maybe in two months time uh, so uh, we would go around 1200 uh, maybe in six months or else one year time from now so that is again uh, that's our expansion that is our now plan. And, and likewise uh, we also have plans in uh, London as well as in uh, Vancouver as well uh, in London we are planning to have a sizable team in London who to work closely with clients and likewise in uh, Vancouver we have plans we already have a team but uh, we also have plans to build a sizable team in Vancouver 
and also in uh, eastern europe uh, we have plans to partnership and collaborate with the uh, uh, other studios which have, who are really good and uh, that's something that we are also working at the moment uh, last question bala to you is that uh, you know you have done a great job by building such a great company in so many years and now you are going to go public so two questions attached is now for the new shareholders who are going to join you as uh, you know their uh, partners in this company what would be the kind of message you would like to give them in terms of the opportunity which you would like to share with them i think something which uh, you know they can cherish and you know rightly say that they invested in your company and they obviously benefited from them so what is the kind of opportunity which you can actually you know uh, you know uh, at least uh, you know briefly tell them that okay this is a great opportunity and please do join us uh, sure guys uh, it's a really good company uh, as in you can see how we have grown from uh, la five member team to 500 in the last 10 years uh, right, starting from scratch with all uh, by ourselves and uh, and now we have set up a platform to build from here and uh, we're really looking forward to it and uh, as a company uh, we see a lot of potential as well uh, the number of the projects that we have done uh, we have involved ourselves into mainstream hollywood movies uh, it's all uh, very uh, mainstream movies and television uh, projects that we have done and, uh, and also in commercials Uh, we have associated ourselves with uh, major networks across uh, hollywood and uh, this is very uh, exciting time for a comp- uh, to someone as an investor to come in a company like this uh, uh, the 10 years time and we have set up a platform and uh, and i really hope this would uh, exponentially grow from here and uh, and i'm sure with the strength and the potential that we have uh, we will go places from here uh, based on the size and the platform that we have set and also the record is there for the visibility you know in every business there are some risk factors attached so in our business what is the kind of biggest concern which you have like you know obviously all this has been taken care by you over the last 10 years but uh, you know if you exclude covid which was like a global pandemic normally in our business what is the major risk which we obviously look at whenever we you know do business and how is this risk mitigated by you you know whenever it does come i think like covid any factor that could uh, disrupt uh, production could be the risk factor apart from that is all could be temporary because as we would have seen uh, even during covid how things have changed maybe uh, things have altered for uh, maybe 3 4 months but apart from that things have only uh, uh, started surging from there onwards and the demand has become high so there is always a place for entertainment i don't uh, there there could be few risk factors but i don't see them being a prominent player or else uh, they could play from prominently but uh, we see uh, the entertainment industry can always thrive over, over the maybe uh, the coming years and uh, that's what we see uh, there are few risk factors like uh, anything that can disrupt uh, production could be a risk factor i think uh, bala my point was that you know you have a very talented team you know a talented workforce so how do you generate you know uh, some sort of enthusiasm and confidence amongst your workforce because finally you know uh, they are your you know indirectly your brand ambassadors so typically you know what are the kind of initiatives you have taken to retain them you know to ensure that your business journey grows exponentially even in the future yeah i'm really grateful to my team and the way they have come up so far and uh, the trust they have on us and uh, that's how we have uh, become a good company just because of the team uh, that we have and uh, as myself coming from an artist background i could really connect and understand the team and uh, so that's really helped me uh, on various fronts of what an artist would aspire for and uh, their aspiration addressing their aspirations and uh, creating a kind of environment uh, where we constantly evolve and uh, reinvent and uh, get into some cross training so that's that really helped us uh, to place a growth road map for each of them so that really helped us uh, to make sure that to get the confidence and to retain a successful team yeah so whatever i've seen is like the trust and the confidence yeah. that the team has on uh, bala or on the management team is, uh, is something that we always look up to and we make sure that we address uh, the demands or the needs or the uh, the aspirations uh, of the employees uh, to make sure that if they wanted to become more creative if they really Uh, want to perceive it then we definitely try and give them an opportunity to do that so we always work around their uh, their aspirations in life and we make sure that those are getting fulfilled uh, and they, we show them a very good road map so that they can stay and they can uh, build themselves with the company as the company grows on so that is how we maintain a good relationship other than that we do a lot of activities on the floor we kind of engage a lot in lot of social activities as well as we uh, 
people team activities and uh, we keep people engaged uh, every time so that they don't get bored with the work that they do <laughs> so it's like we always keep them engaged and we make sure that the environment is happy always okay. yeah yeah i've seen everything from cricket tournaments to <laughs> tournaments to you know yeah. like you know funny friday yeah. games and you know everybody's always having fun yeah well, i think uh, balak it was a pleasure talking to you uh, jennifer ma'am yogalakshmi i think thank you very much for your valuable time today and i think we could uh, get a lot of good data points from this interview from your side my best wishes to you your entire management team and your forthcoming ipo thank you thank you so much avinash so nice talking to you thank you jennifer okay.